Hi, this is Corrine for Cut at Home's design team, and today I'm using Lawn Fawn's Bake Me a Cake stamp set. This is a super fun stamp set to work with. It's the first time that I'm getting a chance to use it, and I absolutely love it. There's several things to choose from. As you can see, there are five different layers of the cake that you can stack. There are two cake plates to choose from. There are also three different cupcake toppings you can use, along with a happy birthday sentiment and several different decorations that you can add to either the cakes or the cupcakes. So I'm pulling out some watercolor paper from Ranger, along with some stays on ink, because I wasn't sure what I was going to do with these at this point. I, I thought I might watercolor with them, but I end up not doing so. So I could have used just um, some smooth white cardstock. So when you first get a stamp set like this, you want to stamp it off on scrap paper just to get rid of any residue that may be on the stamp. My first two stamps with that cake plate came out so nicely I didn't worry about it. But you'll see me stamp off right here onto scrap paper several times before stamping directly onto my worksheet. I decided to build two different cakes because I was making this for my sister's birthday, but I wasn't sure what color scheme I was going to go with. So I did two different cakes. That way I could play around with the colors. They also in the stamp set, if you saw, they have different candles to choose from. I'm using the group of candles. They also have single candles. I just love this stamp set. You can make the cakes wonky looking if you wanted to. I do that on the inside of one of the cards. So here I'm using the Tim Holtz Distress Ink Markers, and I'm so excited to have these. I don't know why I waited so long to get them. I absolutely love his inks, so I'm excited to have the markers themselves. And now I'm testing off a few colors. I'm very familiar with his inks, so I kind of knew this, the colors that I wanted to try out. I ended up with Worn Lipstick and Spun Sugar. And when I colored this in, I was originally going to color the lighter color first and then add a little bit of the worn lipstick in, but I wasn't happy with how that was turning out. I wanted it a little bit richer, a little bit darker. So I ended up just going over it with the worn lipstick. And in the end, I was really happy with how it turned out. So I'll let you sit back, watch this, and I'll be back. So now here I'm pulling out some swirlies for the frosting and they also have some just for decoration as well. And I'm stamping it off a few times just to, like I said, condition the stamp. And I knew at this point I was not going to be watercoloring so I pulled out some VersaFine black ink 
And what I decided to do was to cut those out to do them a different color. So I'm doing several of the different sizes. They come in small, medium, and large. So I do several. I wasn't sure what I needed for each um, layer on the cake, so I just did several. Then what I decided when, when I went to cut it out, the easiest way to cut it out would be to add the cake topping to it. And then that way I would have a guide of where I needed to cut it. So what I need is two of the largest, two of the next size down, and so on and so forth. So that's what I end up doing. I cut out two of each layer for the cake. And what I don't, I, I do this off camera, but I just want to tell you that what I did is try to keep the paper as straight as I could, or excuse me, keep my scissors as straight as I could and turn the paper as I'm cutting. It'll give you a much easier cut. And this was a little bit more difficult to cut because it's watercolor paper, so it's thick, but I was able to cut it out no problem. And I do that off camera. I also color them off camera. For the pink cake, I used sponge sugar for the frosting. And for the blue cake, I used um, weathered wood for the different layers. And when I glue them down, I just glue the top of that frosting piece because I end up rolling up the bottom of the scallop just to give the cake, both of the cakes, a little bit more dimension. And they turned out really cute. So I'm just using some Scotch Quick Dry to add, add those onto my cake. Those are some tweezer bee tweezers, which make it great to work with, with tiny items. So now I'm just rolling up those frosting pieces. And here I try and give you a little bit closer look so you can see the dimension on them. They turned out so cute. You can also paper piece with these cakes. That would be cute to do too. So now I pulled out my clear Wink of Stella pen and I'm just adding some glitter just to the frosting on both the cakes. It gives it just enough sparkle without adding too much. So now I'm looking to add a decoration to the bottom layer of the cake. Again, drying that with my heat gun since VersaFine takes a little bit longer to dry. And now I'm using the white picket fence that comes in the collection of markers to add just a little bit of color to that, that little um, bow at the bottom. I'm not measuring these, I'm just cutting them out and I'm, I'm going to work cards around them. And I'm also going to stamp the happy birthday sentiment. I have to say I held my breath a little bit when I stamped this because had I ruined, this, ruined the stamping, I would not have been happy because I just did all that work to the cake. But it really stamped beautifully. So I stamped one underneath, one off to the side just to give them a little bit, a little difference. And I wanted a little more white to those. So I'm using my, my Signo Uni, Uniball Broad white pen. So now I decided to take a white piece of cardstock. I'm cutting it down to five and a half, or excuse me, 11, scoring it at five and a half, and then the width is four and a half. I used my Heartfelt Deluxe Flower Shaping Kit for the stylus in it, and that works out perfect. And I knew I wanted some gray stripes behind the one with the pink. I, I love the pink and gray together. So I pulled out the Simple Story Snap Collection. I'm using two different collections that you see here. One is the Color Vibe one, and the other is the Basics. And I pulled out a gray piece of paper to give it um, some color behind it, but I end up using pink instead. I wanted it to pop a little bit more than what it did here. So on my gray stripe, I ended up cutting it a quarter smaller, so I cut it at four and a quarter by five and a half. That way it went down the entire um, length of the card, but widthwise it left a little bit of a white border. And then I cut down that pink mat behind it. I'm using some Angel Craft tape in the one quarter inch. This is a super strong double side adhesive that is from Cut at Home as well. I love this tape. So I'm adding it to all my layers and then I will just build my layers. I was deciding here if I wanted to pop it up or put it straight on the card, but I, I liked putting it straight on the card for this one. And 
Now I will add that to my card base. And I decided this is the card that I was going to give to my sister. So I wanted to finish off the inside. So I'm just using some scraps of the paper that I had, not measuring. Um, I just measured the width of the card, which was four and a half, but I didn't measure how wide I wanted the strips to be or how tall. So I just added them on again using the angel craft tape. And I added another cake to the inside, and I believe this one I did three layers of it. Um, but I did it a little bit wonky, so I'm putting down a post-it paper to mask off where the cake was so it looks like they're stacked on top of each other perfectly. And again, just kind of making it a little bit more wonky, which I love how it turned out. So now for the middle of this one, I'm adding hearts. And then I will quickly color it in with spun sugar marker. And then also mustard seed for the candles on top. I did end up embossing this one. I wanted to give it a little bit of a shine. So I embossed it with some clear embossing powder. And now, like I said, I will just quickly color these in. And then with a little bit darker marker, um, the markers have a brush tip and a fine tip. I was able to write out my sentiment with the fine tip of fired brick, I believe. So that's my finished card for the first one. The second one I do put together off screen. I do it very similar to the first one, however, um, I put a little border on the side and I do pop up this, the middle piece. So I used the back side of that paper. I used a Fisker's um, edge punch. I stamped it or um, cut it out, added it to the border of my, my cake paper. And then now I'm adding a few enamel dots. And that's all there was to it. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment. And I hope you stop by Cut at Home's blog. There will be lots more detailed information on the sizes of the cards and products that I use. Thanks so much for watching.